Hi everybody, and today you find me in Horncastle, which is in Lincolnshire, um, where I am on the search for Horncastle's probably mostly well-known son. Now, famous or infamous, is that what we would call him? I don't know, because Horncastle was the home of the hangman, and the founder of the long drop, William Marwood. Now he was born in Goldsby, just up the road, seven miles away, but he had a cobbler's shop here in Horncastle. Now I'm taking a trip round. He's, he's supposed to be buried in this churchyard at All Saints in Horncastle. Um, whether I'll be able to find his grave, I do not know. I don't think I will be able to, but I can find where his cobbler's shop was. And then I'll be telling you the story of how this man, who after being a cobbler for years, suddenly decided that he wanted to badger the governor of Lincoln Jail when he was in his fifties, to ask him if he could possibly do a hanging so that he could show that he could do the long drop which would kill people instantly rather than them dying of slow strangulation. So I'll tell you the story of William Marwood as we walk around and take a look at uh, the sites of the church and Horncastle. Now, firstly, before we get started, let me apologize for walking completely around the wrong churchyard. This is in fact St. Mary's and not All Saints. So lovely church and grounds as it is, it's not where William Marwood was laid to rest. Also, All Saints is no longer a church and all the gravestones have been dug up. Souvenir hunters have long chipped away and no trace is left of Marwood's gravestone. So William Marwood was born in Goldsby, just seven miles down the road in 1818. He was one of ten children. His father was a cobbler and shoemaker in Horncastle. And William followed the tradition and worked in the small shop for the whole of his working life. So what made him at the age of 54 decide to badger the governor of Lincoln Castle Jail to allow him to hang a convicted prisoner. Now coming up just over the road here, the tiny one floor building that you can see with the blue plaque between the two larger buildings is Marwood's cobbler's shop and I will return to it again very soon on the way back after I've told you the story. So back to the story. Well he did convince the governor by explaining how using the long drop a way which he had developed which killed the prisoner instantly by breaking the neck rather than letting them strangle slowly and it was decided that 28-year-old William Frederick Horry would be hanged on April the 1st by Marwood for the murder of his wife Jane, earning the distinction of being the first successfully dispatched condemned man by the long drop method and also being the first of the soon-to-be new British hangman's 176 executions credited to the Horncastle Cobbler. Marwood was the first hangman to be paid a retainer and a fee per execution. He was paid £20 retainer and £10 per execution, plus all expenses, and as he travelled by train all over the Britain to attend these executions, he did rather well out of it, instead of like before of other hangmen receiving a salary. Once it was known that Marwood was now the country's executioner in his hometown here in Horncastle, the sale of bootlaces skyrocketed. He was a celebrity. 
He put a sign, Crown Officer, outside his shop and had business cards printed with William Marwood Executioner on them. He was the hangman for nine years and just a month after hanging his last victim, James Burton, in Durham Prison for murdering his wife, he died from inflammation of the lungs. His children from his first wife, Jessie, did rather well out of his death, with him owning a number of properties in the town. His second wife, Ellen, only survived him by a month or two. They had no children and she was a heavy drinker. Before she died, she sold all his clothes to Madame Tussauds and all his ropes and equipment to a collector. So here we are back at the little cobbler's shop where Marwood carried out his day job and also did his experiments for his long drop. Now, a celebrity. I don't know how you bracket an executioner. I get the feeling you need to be a psychopath yourself to be one. So what do you think? Leave me your comments down below. I'd be really interested to know what you think of William Marwood. Famous or infamous? Well, I hope you enjoyed that little story. We actually uh, did find the cobbler's shop that uh, William Marwood worked at all his life. We like that little tale on Boxing Day here on a little bit uh, cold Horn Castle. If you did, if you could give it the old thumbs up, I really, really appreciate it. Apparently, it does the channel good. And uh, all the best. Thank you very much indeed. We'll see you soon. And uh, with that, I wish you all a happy new year. Take care.